Okay, let's take a look at the law of diminishing returns. And in particular, we're going to think about how it then links to the unit cost of production. So the law of diminishing returns refers to short run production, where at least one input of production, one input, normally land, um, could be capital, is fixed in supply. The only way we can increase output is by adding more units of a variable factor, for example, labor and or raw materials components to the production process. What the key is what happens to the productivity of the extra units of labor that we bring in. So average product measures output per worker or output per unit of capital, but in this case, it'll be output per worker. Marginal product is the change in output from increasing the number of workers just by one. And the law of diminishing returns says that as more units of a variable input, e.g. labor, are added to a fixed amount of land and capital, the change in output will at first rise, increasing returns, but then fall, diminishing returns to labor. Now here's an example. The firm is adding workers from one through to six, and with each successive worker, the total output increases from eight to 20 to 36 and so on. From this data, we, we can then calculate marginal product, First worker adds eight to the production process. Second worker adds 12. The third worker adds 16. But can you see the fourth worker only adds 12? The fifth, just seven. And the sixth, just five to the production of the product. That is diminishing returns where marginal product is fallen. Sketching this, the first, the second, the third worker add successively more to output. So marginal product is rising. Peak 16, but then the fourth worker only adds 12, the fifth just seven, the sixth just five, so marginal product falls due to diminishing returns to labor, mainly because we've now got more labor relative to capital. So the amount of capital per worker is falling. We can also show this in terms of total output. When marginal product is going up, then the gradient of the total output curve is rising. But when marginal product is falling, from a fourth worker onwards, total output still increasing, but at a decreasing rate. The total output curve has a shallower gradient. Eventually, indeed, the next worker might add nothing to production, in which case marginal product would be zero. Now, what about the average product? Well, the key to this is to understand that the marginal drives the average. So the first worker has a marginal output of eight. Obviously, the average is eight. The second worker adds 12 to production. And that drags the average up to 10 for the two workers. Third worker adds 16, drags the average up to 12. The fourth worker just adds 12. Previous average was 12, so the average stays at 12. But the fifth worker, marginal returns now falling, they can only add 7 to output. That drags the average down from 12 to 11 across the five workers. Likewise, if the sixth worker only, only contributes five units, takes the total up to 60, but the average falls to 10. So when marginal product is greater than average product, average product is rising. But crucially, from our point of view, when marginal product is less than average product, when the next worker adds less than the previous average, the, the average productivity will start to fall. That's going to be important. In terms of returns to labor, when marginal product is rising we say there are increasing or rising returns as soon as it starts to fall we get into the red zone here we get diminishing returns to labor so crucially just to capture the point when diminishing returns set in the marginal product of labor starts to contract starts to get lower and eventually the marginal product declines below the existing average productivity, in which case the average product will also start to fall. The fifth worker is when that happens. Um, conversely, if the marginal product is greater than the previous average, the average will go up from 10 to 12. Now, the key is to link this to cost. So in a nutshell, uh, diminishing returns say that as we add more variable factors to a fixed factor, um, the firm which appointment has a high level of labor relative to capital and therefore the marginal product of labor will tend to fall 
if you're paying workers, let's say, £10 an hour to produce Christmas cards or to produce flip burgers in a shop, the lower is their marginal productivity, the higher will be the marginal cost to you, the supplier, of getting the product to market. So diminishing returns to labour helps to explain why marginal cost of production tends to rise. Diminishing returns causes a fall in the marginal product of labour. Eventually, this causes the average product to fall, output per worker. And assuming that labour is the main variable cost of production, which in many labour-intensive industries it probably is, a fall in average product causes average variable cost, the AVC curve, to start rising. So there is a link between the law of diminishing returns and the shape of the average variable cost curve and also the marginal cost curve. I hope that explains an important little bit of micro theory for you.